if you have uh, if you have Hashimoto's but your if you have Hashimoto's if you have Hashimoto's but your TSH and free two okay if you have Hashimoto's and your TSH and free T4 are normal because you're taking leave with rocks or something like that but you still feel bad right you've got GI symptoms you've got depression anxiety insomnia weight gain okay those problems are caused by the Hashimoto's it's not some separate issue okay ah. There's a lot of people with Hashimoto's that still feel bad even though they're taking the medication the way they're supposed to and even though their TSH and their free T4 looks good. Now these people are often told by their doctors, well, you know, I guess you're just depressed or I need to go, you need to go see the psychiatrist or you should go see the gastroenterologist. What they're failing to realize, okay, is that the level of your antibodies that you have with Hashimoto's is directly related to those symptoms. It's not some separate other problem, most likely. 90% of the time, and I know this from 20 plus years of treating Hashimoto's patients, it's your immune system, it's the Hashimoto's that's doing that. Now, because an immune system is like having, an autoimmune problem is like having a, an octopus sitting on your back, right? It's got tentacles in all different corners of your body messing with things. That's why I have a, a picture of an octopus back there that one of my patients gave me. So, new research is proving to us again that your level of TPO antibodies, your level of thyroid gland, so new research is proving once again that the level of your thyroid antibodies and your thyroglobulin antibodies, your TPO antibodies, those are directly related to how bad you feel, even if your TSH and T4 are normal, okay? Now that should be good news for you because what that means is, is that your Hashimoto's, the autoimmune stuff, probably isn't that well controlled even though your TSH is normal. So I've made a lot of videos over the years. I keep coming back to this theme because research keeps coming up and proving it. Uh, there's basically two kinds of thyroid problems, okay? There's a quantity problem and there's a usage problem. So Hashimoto's likes to create both. So with the usage problem, what happens is, you know, it diminishes your ability to make thyroid hormones. You become hypothyroid and so you take the levothyroxine, right? So blood tests, Okay, blood tests like TSH and free T4 can tell you how many hormones are floating around. But the blood test cannot tell you if you're using it, right? Whether you use those hormones or not is the function of your thyroid hormone receptors. And they're like a little antenna in all of your cells waiting for the T4 to come by and dock and tell the DNA of the cell what to do. But here's the problem. Here's the whole big deal, okay? Those receptors can be made to malfunction be blocked, down-regulated, so that you can have normal TSH and T4, but not be functioning like you have normal TSH and T4, right? That is the deal. So that, what that means is, is you can be taking levothyroxin, the numbers look good on the labs, but you don't feel good, okay? What that's telling you is the Hashimoto's is probably still causing the receptor problem, right? Now, the number one thing that will mess with those receptors is inflammation. And of course, there's cortisol and some other stuff, but the main thing is inflammation. So Hashimoto's is giving you a double whammy, right? So there's some recent research that came out uh, early, uh, late last year. It basically proves this all over again, right? They looked at a lot of people with Hashimoto's that had normal TSH and T4, looked at their symptoms, matched it up with their antibodies, and here's what they found. They found that your TPO antibodies and your thyroid globulin antibodies are directly related to how bad you feel, right? So therapeutically, right, as someone who treats a lot of Hashimoto's patients, what do we gotta do? Well, we've gotta do everything we can to get these antibody levels down. So let's start with that, right? Well, what would make these antibody levels stay high, right? Well, the first thing you gotta know is is that sometimes they stay high no matter what you do, right? And, but you don't wanna be doing things that are actively counterproductive, right? So for me, I think diet is incredibly important. If you eat the wrong things for Hashimoto's, you can guarantee your antibodies are never gonna go down and you're probably gonna have a hard time really getting better long term, right? Now, I've made a lot of videos on the foods that I think are definitely a problem for Hashimoto's patients, most of them. Uh, but beyond that, we've got nutrient deficiencies like vitamin D, right? There's selenium, and I'm not telling you to run out and start taking those things because you're not trained, you don't know uh, really what you ought to be doing. I know there's a lot of people that will tell you, oh, just take vitamin D, take selenium, you know, buy my course. I don't recommend you do that. I recommend you work with someone who's trained and has experience that knows all the stuff we're talking about, right? They're the ones that need to be walking you through it. I don't want you trying to treat yourself. Nonetheless, these are still things that we know can make the antibodies high, right? Eating the wrong foods, uh, nutrient deficiencies, but then the list starts to get pretty big <laughs> because really anything that keeps your immune system stimulated and unbalanced, 
because you have an autoimmune problem, uh, is technically, is, so anything that keeps your immune system stimulated and unbalanced can keep your antibody levels high. Now that's a long list of stuff I'm not gonna go through, but there could be uh, GI, uh, oh, but there could be like GI overgrowth. There could be uh, uh, chronic infections you have. It could be that you've got a blood sugar problem, right? It could be you have, you know, the ubiquitous uh, hyperleaky gut. The point is, you've got to have someone you're working with to dig through all that stuff, right? So, so let's not lose sight of what I, why I made this video. I made this video to let you know that if you still feel bad and you've got Hashimoto's but your TSH and free T4 is normal, it's not necessarily, you know, all in your head, right? It's not your fault. It's probably the Hashimoto's that is not well controlled. So you've got to do some further digging. Now, I like to do uh, what's called multiple tissue antibody testing because when you have Hashimoto's, usually it takes seven to 10 years to get diagnosed with that. And in that seven to 10 years, your immune system can be attacking other things. It can expand. You can have more than one autoimmune problem. And multiple tissue antibody testing can uh, let us look into that. And it also, uh, not to go into this too deep, that antibody testing can tell us what foods you want to be avoiding. Because, uh, bit sad news here, uh, food sensitivity testing is a waste of time. There's really not much point in doing it, okay? But there is a thing called cross-reaction that happens. So based on the tissue antibodies that are present, we can determine from the you know, literature, because I got a big spreadsheet, that'll tell us, hey, here's the foods that cross-react with this. Meaning you better not eat them, because if you do, you're probably gonna make your immune system problem worse, right? So I also like to do what's called lymphocyte uh, map testing or immunophenotyping. And that's basically looking under the hood of the immune system looking at T cells and B cells and natural killer cells and finding out, okay, what is this person's immune system fingerprint, right? Because just because you have Hashimoto's does not mean your immune system is doing exactly what the other 100 people are, right? You give me 100 people with Hashimoto's, they all have their own phenotypes, just like we've all got our own fingerprints. And that test lets you very quickly uh, determine, is the immune system normal? If it's not normal, in what specific way is it abnormal so that we treat and target that specifically for what's in your case? So we don't treat something you don't have. We don't have to guess. We can just zero in on what is most appropriate for that particular person's case. So that's why it's important to realize, okay, so that immune system digging, you were doing that to try to get these antibody levels down as low as you can get them. Now, the antibody levels don't often correlate exactly with how bad you feel. Uh, like, you know, someone with uh, 500 antibodies may not feel anything compared to someone that has 100 on the antibodies. But we do know that the higher antibodies are generally the worse off you're going to feel, especially if you're already, you know, euthyroid, if your TSH and free T4 are already normal. So I treat a lot of Hashimoto's patients, and I've treated a ton over the last 20 plus years. And the vast majority of Hashimoto's patients that make it to me, okay, they don't feel good, but they're already taking medication. So the result, the, the key is not to now take T3, right? The key is usually that they have a usage problem and it's a usage problem caused by Hashimoto that's not well controlled and it's immune system that's not well controlled and not well managed, it's not in balance. So you've got to dig and figure out where that is. So the moral of the video is it is not your fault, right? It is not just in your head. You're not just depressed, right? it's that the antibodies are probably doing it, right? So you've got to work with someone that knows how to dig and find out what's keeping the antibodies high, what's going on with your immune system, and develop an appropriate treatment plan, not a cookie cutter, for your particular immunophenotype. Okay, hope you guys found that helpful. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.